Hey everyone, it's James here from the Dev Genie Academy, and welcome to this week's episode where we'll be looking at improving the rendering of our render management class. Because at the moment, for every entity that is created, you'll basically be rendering the same model, the same entity, every single time in every single frame. So first of all, or in the Render Manager class, create a private map model of list of entities, call it entities, and instance that to a new hash map. Above the render method, let's create a public void bind method and we'll pass in the model here as a parameter. The first thing you need to do in the render method is from the GL bind vertex array up to the enable vertex array. So from the bind vertices array up to the enable vertex array, pass that into the bind method and remove it from render completely. And all we need to do now is change it from entity.getModel just to model.getID. We can also grab the material instance and add that to the bind method as well. And just call that model.getMaterial. The next thing we need to do is grab the activate texture of DL texture coordinate zero and the bind texture method as well. Because again, that's all to do with, uh, with models. So we need to do that once per render per model. So next up, after the bind, we can create a public void unbind method. Um, no parameters in this one. Um, all we need to do is the gl disable vertex attrib array and also the bind vertex array of zero will be added into that unbind method. And that's all we need to do for the unbind. So the next one is a public void prepare method. And this takes in a entity of entity and also a camera as the parameters. So in this one, we can grab the shader dot set uniform of the texture sampler, the transformation matrix. We also need to add the shader dot set uniform of the view matrix. There we go. And next up, after that, we can do a public void render lights method, and that just takes in the camera, camera, the point light list of point lights the spotlight list of spotlights and finally the directional light and just call it directional light and in here all we need to do is grab the ambient light the specular power and the directional light actually we'll do the directional light last so just this ambient light and specular power and our two for loops including the num lights integer and then after that at the end we can add the directional light there There we go. So that's the render lights method done. So in the render method itself, we're going to be calling shader.bind. We're going to be setting the projection matrix. We then need to call render lights, which is camera point light, spotlight, and directional light. And we can create a for loop of model, model, and this is going to be entities.keyset. So this is going to loop through all of our models that we have set in our scene. So first we call the bind method, which passes in the model. We then grab the list of the entities of that model. So it's just list of entities, entity list equals entities dot get model. And we can then loop through the entities list itself. So for entity, entity of entity list. From here, we can then call the prepare method. Oh, I need to also remove the entity from the render method itself. That gets rid of that error. So in the for loop we call the prepare method which passes the entity and the camera and we can then also add that draw elements method underneath and after this for loop so not after the for loop of model after the for loop of entity list we can then do the unbind method um, we can get rid of all our empty code or empty lines we can do entities dot clear and then the shader dot unbind but at the moment we've got no way of populating that entities list so what we're going to need to do is we need to create a process entities function. So that will be a public void process entities. And this will pass in the entity itself as a parameter. First of all, we need to create a list of the entities. And we'll call this entity list. And that's going to equal to entities.getEntity.getModel. So if that entity list doesn't equal null, then we know that the entity list has a parameter so we can just straight up add the entity to the list if that's not the case we need to create a new entity list 
So we'll just call this new entity list. And this is going to equal to a new array list. And then we can say new entity list dot add the entity itself. And then we can do entities dot put. We put in entities dot get model and the en new entities list itself. So that's a way we can add entities to that list. So we need to go into our test game class. And first of all, what we need to do is change entities into a list. So we can get do that by doing a private list of entity and then change the variable name to entities and just make sure we import list in there. There's only a few errors that we need to address here. So what we can do is move into the init method and instead of just calling a single entity, what we can do is we can create a for loop and let's create multiple entities, but let's make them of the same model and same texture. So at the very start, after render.init, we can say entities dot, uh, sorry entities equals a new array list, and we can create a new random as well. So random rand equals a new random, and we can say for int i equals zero. Oops, i equals zero. I've done it again. Let me try that again. There we go. So if i is less than two hundred, so we're going to be creating two hundred blocks to the screen currently. We can then say float x equals r and d dot next float, and we'll multiply that value by 100, negative 50. We can do the same for the Y component, but for the Z component, we'll do it slightly different. We'll do Z is random dot, dot next float multiplied by negative 200. And then we can say entities dot add a new entity of, oh, we need to move model and set texture above this for loop. So let's just grab those two lines. And there we go. And let's just add them above the entity entity's creation. So new entity of model, a new vector 3f of x, y, and z, if I can actually do it. x, y, and z, there we go. We also need to do the new vector 3f of random.next float, and we'll do that divided by, uh, sorry, we'll do that multiplied by 180 for the x component. This is the rotation that we're looking at here. And for the Y component, we can do random dot next float multiplied by 180 as well. And we can make the Z component zero, if I can actually get my typing correctly. And finally, the scale will be set to one. So that's creating 200 entities of the same model and same texture. And um, what we also do is I'll just to get the lighting there as well. I'll add a static entity right in front of the camera as we render the scene. So we'll create a new entity of model vector 3f of 0, 0, negative 2f. And we can then do a rotation of 0, 0, 0. And finally, the scale of 1. So that's just going to get our point light, spotlight, and, well, the two spotlights and the point light. So now we've populated a list of entities. We need to now move into the update method. We'll come back to the render and clear that up because it's just removing the variable. But in the update method, at the very bottom after we do the directional light, what we can do is we can call a for loop of entity, entity. And we can do entities as the list. And we can just do renderer.process entity and pass the entity there as a parameter. So for each update cycle, the entities are getting added to the renderer to be processed. And then, of course, in render, we just need to remove the entities. So if we go ahead and run that now, we should see that blocks right in front of us. But if you move back a little bit, we can see the other 200 blocks has been processed and rendered at random rotations. And our directional light is also still in focus. And I think the point light is actually on the back face of this cube here. Yeah, there it is. There's the spotlight. It's a bit, it's a bit further forward than what it needs to be. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week.